Hey folks, I'm Jerry Phillips. Welcome to Recovery Today, the only show in the Tri-Cities area that takes a look at alcoholism, drug addiction, and recovery from them. And as usual, I have my co-host, the lovely Deanna Irick, <laughs> founder of Iron Mountain Counseling, Elizabethan, Tennessee. Right. Hi, Deanna. Hi, Jerry. Good. Now this show not only talks about alcoholism and drug addiction, and recovery from it. But we go from, we, 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 we go everywhere in this show. Mainly the topics are alcoholism and drug addiction. But you gotta remember one thing. The views expressed here are that of me, me, and Deanna. <laughs> or vice versa. Yeah. yeah. I was looking in the mirror, I didn't know yeah. where I was. Uh, I wanna thank Heritage TV for allowing us to have this show on. It's long needed, well overdue. And in a closing note, we are not affiliated with any recovery organization, institution, or program. We do it right here, live, and what are we gonna talk about today? First, we need to thank our anonymous sponsor. Our anonymous sponsor, thank Who you. Who makes it good for us to be on the show. And we want more sponsors yeah, we need for this more show. Sponsors. Come on. Get it out there. It makes us go to a wider audience. So L let's talk about. Lighten up the hip. <laughs> Come see Jerry and Deanna. <laughs> <laughs> Come sit in the audience. That would help, too. Yeah. Okay, so let's continue. We did bath salts last time. Let's go there. And the reason I want to go there is because I was at the gas station yesterday morning. And what are they talking about? I walk in, bath salts. You know what the lady at the counter says? I walk in and I hear the guy, you know, complaining about bath salts and how they can't stop the kids from doing anything these days. And the woman at the counter, who's probably 40-ish, says, you know, yeah, when I was in school, we lost two kids in my class to what? Angel dust. Angel dust. From marijuana. I never heard of anybody dying from yeah, angel dust. Yeah, she said that they had lost two kids in Oh, yeah, because they go into psychotic out, episodes with Which is angel exactly dust. what yeah. happens with... with like this kid that's on uh, yeah. Channel 5 there, whatever it is, yeah. that they, they, they do every night. But I kind of like it because uh, the, the citizens have taken on their own identity. They're like yeah. the tea party against bath salts. I think it's awesome. And now it's if we great. can get it. And, 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 and when you get 50 or 70 people out in front of your store going, go away. And, and what I like about it is they said they don't want to shut the store down. Right. Just quit selling bath salts. Right. Like I said, on the last show. You know what you're doing, you're right. killing people, you're ruining right. lives, just take it off the mar market right. and, and uh, lose the greed. But you know, honestly, what still scares me about all of it, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that everybody's out there protesting, you need to continue to do that because that makes it a little bit higher Very up and people pay more attention. Yep. So parents are more pay more attention, but what scares me about it, so now we make it illegal, they change a the chemical compound, Two years from now, we're going to be doing this again with another name. Yeah. With another, another thing. So, you know, really and truly, it's the struggle is always going to be here. How do we get back to identifying how do we help kids, how do we help adults not cave to peer pressure? Because even adults do that. Well, you, you know, you, you, you know. said it, uh, I don't know if it was last year or the show before. Whoever invents the new drug, you put it out there, they're gonna come. Yeah. You know, and you're right. The bath salt craze is gonna end in about six months right. because, you know, the government is putting its fist down. Right. But no, it's because the people are putting their. Well, fist because down. the people have made a protest, and yeah. the government has to, they have to do something in, right. the, in the cities and the towns. They have to do something. And that's how it works. You know? if or they don't have, say have any jobs. Enough. Yeah. You know, yeah. which is good. Um, I like it. I, I just think that uh, yeah. you're under the camera. Big Brother is watching you now. Yeah. Right. But, uh, you know, I was watching the other station and, uh, you know, I'm listening to this kid and he's still leaning towards maybe using again. Yeah. I hope I never do. I only have one more chance. Right. Well, if you're talking that way, kid, you're going to use it again. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the only thing I said. God love you. I hope you don't. But 
I'm saying in about a month, you're going to use it again. And why? I mean, let's think because about it for realistic. No, most of these kids out here using this stuff are not addicts yet. Okay? Explain Mo that. Well, Explain okay. That. We're, let's, let's get real about high school. Yeah. That's where you try everything. Oh, yeah. Somebody's got it, you're going to try it. You know, my daughter talked, I don't know if I said this before, my daughter was telling me one day about that they would take Smarties. Smarties. The people that she knew in school would take Smarties and snort them because they What's did something Smarties? weird. It's, it's a little hard candy thing. It's, it's really, you know, so... Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's candy. It's chemical yeah. candy. Really? Uh, yeah. And, but in the end, <laughs> if one kid tries something and it sounds like fun, the next kid is going to do it. And these kids don't necessarily need to be addicts to be trying this stuff. Because even us as adults... Is we it get, peer pressure because your best friend uses it? We get hooked the same it? way. Listen, we get hooked the same way. Our best friend uses... Oh, gosh, I can't. Let's say some kind of shampoo, and it makes their hair look really great, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to ask your friend what, what kind of shampoo they're using because their hair looks really cool, or where do they go get it done? Who goes? I'm going to go. It makes me look that good. I'm going over there, too, okay? We all as human beings do that. Good marketing. Not only good marketing, but it works. Yeah. So you go out on Friday night and all your friends start talking about what a great time they had. And now it's Monday. And at school and all you talk about is how much fun you had. And you use this kind of stuff that you can buy anywhere. And it gave you a high for an hour or so. And you went home and you didn't get in trouble <laughs> with mom and dad. Does that not sound awesome? Everybody gets to get a little high, gets to have fun. It's such a great party. So now Friday night, what do you think? He gets to end up in a straitjacket. Yeah. But not all kids in are some, doing that. In some cases. Yeah. Right, which is what the, what the problem is. If we could say, every time you use bath salts, you're going to end up in the emergency room, you're going to end up in a straitjacket, you're going to hallucinate. If we could do that, and across the board that's what happened, kids would not be using bath well, salts. Well, you know what intrigued me about this whole thing is they're finally getting doctors on. And... The compounds are baffling doctors. Yeah. You know? And Which is why they are having such a hard time at making it illegal, trying to figure out what the compounds are, because they just have to switch them a little bit to make it legal because again. Because this one guy said every sample that, that he tried out to you know, see what was going on, the levels get higher in this one, or the higher right. in this one, you know, and I mean, they're out of control levels. Yeah. So I just think they're taking it and, you know. Of course but, they are. I mean, I don't, I don't know, but. That's uh, that scares me, you know, because yeah. the, the the highs are so much more intense than uh, than meth and, and, right. and uh, cocaine. And well, depending on who you are and how you're taking it. Yeah. So now we go back to the whole brain as thing, needed. and it depends on how your brain works. Not as needed because it's a plant that food. Was, you're not supposed to was, take it at all. That was just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. So, okay, so let's go back to the original thing. The original thing yeah, is I went outside we're I all going to try yeah. different stuff. I got the plant food, so I went outside, I put it on my tree, you know, and I was mowing my lawn and looking around, and next thing you know, my tree was flopping all over the yard. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's going on here? <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. But uh, anyway, it's just good to see that. People are. Uh, it is. It's great to see people are taking there, action. You know, and if we could get to that point where we did that with a lot of things, a yeah. lot of the chemicals out there, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Because there, it's not just bath salts. It's no. over the all the over the counter, the little um, shoot yellow jackets, all of that stuff. The five hour energies. No, those aren't bad because they've got a lot of well, vitamin stuff. Well, I've never, I've never pills. used, I've never used. But you know, that I'll stuff better. that you take to, to give you that oomph, man. Yeah. Yeah, them little. Like the monster. What, what the are they filled with? Red Bull. Uh, yeah, what are they filled up? What are we, yeah, but they're we chemicals to, again. Yeah, we used to take them. That, I, don't, that I don't remember. Make, and and they make, make you, you like, the, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I don't mm -hmm. know. That's. Yep. Some, well, That's some, one of yeah, them. Yeah. Epinephrine, and all of those kind of things. But, <clears throat> but all of that stuff is just as just as bad if you yeah. take it in mega doses. Right. Imagine taking a fistful of those things. Well, you have to take a fistful so you can take a test, right? Because you got to yeah. study all night. Yeah. 
right? Yes. Or you take Ritalin, which is really a good drug it's when it's needed Ritalin, in the right, right? Kids with snot and Ritalin. Yeah. And, 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 and they don't and understand. And we have kids overdosing on Ritalin. So yeah, there's because, a lot of things. Because the Ritalin that they're snorting is prescribed for one kid, not for them. Right, because the know? brain is different. Yeah. Yeah. And then they take it, and the brain goes, whoa, not good. Yeah. And, and, and there's your trouble. And, and I guess that's uh, the problem with the young kids. Yeah. When, when, even, well, when even we as were, old people. You know, I was known as the guy as, I don't, I don't know what it is. Well, give it to me. I'll take it. Yeah. And see what it does. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll take it, man. It's okay. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, it's pretty good. Because Whoa. the brain's going to adapt to whatever you put in it. Yeah. Right? That's what drugs do. You, whatever you put in your body, the brain will adapt to it. And so it levels out to make you feel normal with whatever you put in there. Then when you take it away, you don't feel normal again. That's right. So you, the drugs, you start taking the drugs, the brain levels out, makes you feel normal. Then you have to stay on that level of drug for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, anti-anxiety, antidepressants, whatever. Then after a while, it doesn't work anymore and you start to tilt. So then you have to take a little bit more to make it work again. Or you start taking it away and then you tilt the... You know what I'm saying? The brain adjusts to whatever you stick in your body it, to try to get to normal. Then it comes back to the old say, take as needed. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 25 volumes never hurt anybody. Right. right. How many people did it kill before it got that far? Oh, it almost killed me a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. Valium kills. I mean, I remember, all of the things that are good for you can also kill you. I remember taking the Quaaludes, you know, and I was a heavy drinker. Yeah. And it took me about a day and a half to yawn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wah, I mean, I was like... Hmm. But, you're, but, but I brain, thought I was moving fast. Sure. Was, uh, and your brain readjusted to having them there. Next thing you know, I got so sweaty and I got real sick. And I went outside and I was throwing up and going, it's all over, huh? You know, you know here I am ODing, you know, and by the grace of God, you know, I'm still here. Right. But, you know, and, and that's the power because... An hour later, I was doing it again. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and that's and, what and the people don't, is doing. And people it. don't understand it. You just said that. It's This thing up here is going, all right, it's gone. I want more. Right. You know, uh, something's not working good up here. Where right. is that stuff? And if people don't understand it. It's all chemical. Yeah. It's all chemical. Give it to me. Just like you said, I'll keep going back to it. You know, like me, cigarettes. Every 20 minutes, my little receptor in my brain goes to the nicotine receptor. Tell them it's time to have a cigarette. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if you don't have one, then what? Anxiety, panic. You know, I get mad. Um, and, and trying to break that chain, you know, we've said it a million times. Anybody can quit. Yeah. It's stay and quit. Right. Because to get the brain back to where it's supposed to be, it's so hard. Yeah. You know, that's why it's failure. Right. Because... That a little action potential, that spike-like little charge that tells you, I want it, and I want it now. No, 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 no right. messing around. Let's right. give me that stuff. You got to get on the other side of that. And that is so hard, man. It's because part of it, you have to figure out you're not going to die if you don't get it. See, so but the, the easiest way that I can explain it is, yeah. is when you're, do, you're doing whatever drug it is. I don't care if it's bath salts or Valium and you're on Valium to keep you, the anxiety, whatever it is. So the brain adjusts to it. When you take it away, the brain interprets that like you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, so anxiety comes as a result of feeling like I'm gonna die. And it die. flushes the anxiety. Yeah, and mm. flushes that whole chemical through your system. Yeah. So everything shuts down and the anxiety gets so big, so all your adrenal system shuts down, your immune system shuts down, everything shuts down because you have this state of survival. Yeah. And in the survival state, fight, flight, fright. fight, flight, or stand still. Or stand still. Don't forget, there's still that, you do have that last one. And, and most people forget that you can either run, you can fight, or you can stand absolutely still. And the good thing about when you get to that point, um, as bad as it feels, and, and if you've really had enough, it offers you that one last chance to, I'm going to try and beat this. Right. You know. If you Which can remember, leads us you're not going to die again because your brain is saying, if you don't give it to me, you're going to die. If you don't give it to me, you're going to die because it's in that survival mode. And you've taught it the only way to survive is by taking whatever drug you're taking. 
Mm -hmm. So if you can get through and just start saying, I'm not going to die from this, I'm not going to die from this, it lowers the anxiety some. Not altogether, but it will lower it a little bit. And, and uh, I, I remember in, when I was at this private school, I was a drug counselor there and, and back in New England, and this girl was using some, some downs, I don't know what they were, and uh, they busted her and they to call the parents and throw her out, but her parents happened to be pretty well-known, mega wealthy people, cause, so she wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but they took her out and took all the pills, and I went, wait, 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 wait a minute. And I, and I took like three, and they said, what are you doing? And they were going to fire me. Yeah. I said, I'm giving them back to her. What do you mean? I said, what? you take them away and you let her stay in school, and all I see is concrete floors and concrete stairs. What if she has an episode right. or a seizure and falls down the stairs? Right. And you took them away. Yeah. You're going to have a new name to your school. Right. You know? If you give, them the, give her these, at least she'll stay mellow. Right. You know, and, and you brought that up. And I never, 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 never agreed with it. But now I do. If, if you're an addict and you were drinking 30 beers a day, and if you knock it down to nine, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. You know, boom. You're smoking 12 joints a day, you knock it down to three. I don't know why anybody wants to smoke 12 joints a day, because you only get so high. You're just wasting money. I guess it's the same as taking 25 Valium a day. Yeah. Well, you only get so mellow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm in a yawn contest. <laughs> Is this the fifth year in a row she got me? <laughs> yeah, all right. But see, I mean, that's the thing. It is. You know, the, the, to help people understand that sometimes you need something when you quit. Right. You know, that gets, you know, like the methadone and the, what, what is this? Suboxone. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, <laughs> new subject. But I just don't agree. I mean, I understand people need that, you know, because. Uh, the old school way of just, you know, tightening up your belt and biting your knuckles is gone. You know, we, to me, it's like we've gone into the wimpy area, the PC area, which is good. Wow. Don't get me wrong. But I know for myself that when I quit cold turkey and went through that pain and got on the other side, I don't ever want to go back. Right. You know, it's a motivator. Do you right. want to be like that? But I can see now, but I can't see somebody being on sub sub Suboxone. Mm -hmm. or methadone. My buddy in California was on methadone for 20 years. Right. Well, <laughs> you don't want to quit. Right. You know. Well, the hope, okay, the hope is, you know, for all of us, first you want to do harm reduction. If I can get you, I'm right? I if like I can that. get you from being on the street, thieving, you know, beating people up, being violent, whatever it is, to Suboxone, where you get a job and start living a life, a, I want to do that. At a bath salt store? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I want to do that first. Yeah. Okay. Because what will slowly, hopefully, over time, if you're going to a decent suboxone clinic where they're doing true group, where they're truly helping with some individual work, right, that eventually over time you get rid of the lifestyle that goes with the addiction. Because, see, the problem is not honestly getting the dope out of your system. That's not the issue. We can get the dope out of anybody's system in what, depending on what kind of dope it is, anywhere from 10 to 30 days. Yeah. But that doesn't get rid of the craving. It doesn't get rid of the lifestyle. It doesn't get rid of the little invisible blinking light that says, I'm, I'm an addict, I'm an addict, okay? That's it doesn't the, get rid of the craving. It doesn't get rid of any of those no. things. So the hope is that through Suboxone, there's medication for alcohol and cocaine. There's craving medication for lots of things. And abuse. We see it the and most. Abuse. I, took the stuff, I yeah. took them. I took them. Now we see a lot of it with the I nicotine. I thought I was going to die. Yeah. 
I we did. see a lot of it with the nicotine, right? We hear all the time about I, I if you know. want to quit smoking, <laughs> <I would know. laughs> puff on pump puff on this kind of chemical instead, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So nicotine, all of the nicotine gum to help you quit, all of those. So all of that is considered a harm reduction. And I heard, and I heard those that, that that stuff was bad for you. Yeah, but well, it's, it's bad for your liver. Yeah, but it's mm. not lung cancer. And your liver will rejuvenate itself once you clear the chemicals out of your liver. It can reheal. It can rebuild itself. The so liver and the so brain. So positive. <laughs> <laughs> the liver and the brain heal themselves, right? The two it, organs in yeah. your body that heal themselves are the liver and the brain. So if you, harm reduction is if you have to take nicotine gum for six months while you're learning not to have to puff on that cigarette every 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Or puff on that cigarette every time you're upset or you know you got some anxiety or whatever. Then harm reduction is now I'm chewing nicotine. Well, after a while, maybe I can cut down on nicotine gum so it's not so bad. And then over time, you get rid of the nicotine gum because you've gotten over the habit of the smoking cigarette addiction. Yeah. Right? So that's and you've been really the hope. How many years have you, have you quit? Uh, let's see, Joshua's 23, so 18. Wow. Yeah. I had, you know how come I quit? I had an argument with my five-year-old over whether or not cigarettes were a drug. They were a drug. And I, when I went to bed that night, I went, if I have to argue with, over my, with my five-year-old about whether or not cigarettes are a drug, <laughs> maybe I better get off them. Because I don't want to have this argument with him when he's 12 about whether or not alcohol is a drug. <laughs> I would have said, son, go to your room. <laughs> <laughs> Dad's lighting up. Go to your room. <laughs> I know what it is. <laughs> you know, it's got to be a drug because if it wasn't, I would have quit it. You know. <laughs> well, but at that point in my life, I didn't want it to be. I was using it. Yeah. It gave me. It gave me a, an out. And, and and you know, a good thing like like you were just talking about. I I was on my way to work the other morning, and uh, you know, of course I, I I go into panic mode because I didn't have a lighter. Right. I had plenty of cigarettes. I had two packs, but I didn't have a lighter. And, 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 you know, and I did think about it. You know, I said, man, look what you just did. You were ready to just drive that car into a tree. Yeah. Because you didn't have your lighter. Right. And you couldn't smoke your cigarette. You know, and, you know, and it's, and it's still. Uh, it, it's the hardest thing in the world for me right now. I right. mean, I think about it often, but I, I don't know. Is it maybe because it was so hard for the heroin and the cocaine and the alcohol? That I don't want to go through that pain again. Could, could that be? It could be. You know, I mean, I'm not. I'm and not. I'm is, not going reaching out for a cop out. Right. You know, because I know I should philosophy, quit. Philosophy, basically. <coughs> These are the scales, right? When the idea of quitting becomes less painful than having to pay however much you're paying a pack to smoke, you'll quit. I don't. We need... make changes in our life when we are forced to. You know, it's not the money. It's. Well, whatever it is, when or the, the anxiety, or... the idea of quitting, or the idea of dying. Yeah. You know, because that's... That could be, too. That's going to happen. But everybody's scale is different. Because no matter what addiction everybody's you have... Everybody's scale is different. I mean, bad addiction. Yeah. If you don't quit, it's going to kill you. Right. Because it, you oh, never win by doing it. Yeah. And, and that's what people have to understand. But there's If you a drink lot of every day, every day, that's how you're going to die. Yeah. If you do heroin every day, that's how you're going to die because you can't beat it. And you can do what I used to do, say, quit this any time I want, but I don't want to because I like it. Yeah. But I didn't know that I needed it more than I liked it. Right. Because my brain was telling me, yes. feed me. Feed it's me. the same, to me it's the same. So somebody has lung cancer, they get the lung, one lug lopped off and half of this one lopped Walking off. Around with you know, and they're CO2 for six things months, and... they're never gonna smoke again and all of a sudden you see them. Okay, so the pain of what happened to them is no longer outweighs the idea of smoking again. Yeah. So smoking again, the lifestyle of smoking, which does a lot of things. There's a lot of reward in smoking. Calming, a little bit of anxiety reducing, a little a bit of speed, kind of elevates, yeah, right? Yeah, that first there, puff in the morning, you know. Huh? Gets your body started back up. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to have a heart attack or just enjoy the rest of the cigarette. Right? Because <laughs> it gets your heart beating a little you know, bit faster. It's, it's touch and go in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. And There's then, a lot of reward to it. 
you know. That. Yeah, and caffeine too. Yeah, oh yeah. There's a lot of reward that By the time I get out of the bathroom, I'm going about 70 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, because that's what I do. I have my coffee, I have a cigarette. First thing I do when I wake up in the morning, light up a cigarette. Right. You know, go put if the you didn't in. have a cigarette, what would you do? Like, well, what I should do is just go have the coffee. But you wouldn't. Because if I didn't have the cigarette, I wouldn't eat the coffee. What, what do you normally, if you don't have the cigarette, you're going to panic and your brain is going to say, we're going to die. Well, I'm not going to be in a good mood. No, you're going to panic. You're gonna well, go that's what I mean. Yeah, I'm not going to be in a good mood. Pissed, you're going to be panicked and no. your brain is going to say, because if the you last, don't get me a cigarette, you're going to die. The last time I quit, all I thought about was cigarettes for two weeks. That's yeah. the, the longest I ever quit. And, and that's all I thought about every day. But anyway, let's get up. Let's get off that. Okay. How about now? Uh, you know, you you're pretty well known in your circles of, mm. of recovery and helping people. Get us some. Get us one of some one of those Suboxone guys to come on okay. for the next show. I'd like to. I, I really like to listen to this guy. And, um, I'll ask. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. I won't promise it for the next show, but we'll see what we can do. Because we want you guys to be informed. We want you to know what's out there, how to find it. We'd love to have recovering centers come and sponsor us to get your name out here so people know who you are. There's a lot of recovery centers in our area that I didn't even know about even after working at Frontier Health for as long as I was with them. Yeah. You know, I'm learning about all these recovery centers around here that, you know, some cost money, some don't. All, and I'm like... How come I didn't know about those before to have options for people? And that's another good when they leave 30 30 day treatment. And that's you know? another good topic because I'm for I'm for the drug courts, right? And getting drunk drivers off the road, right? You know, but I have a problem when they charge. I don't care if you're a lawyer or you you you, you pick up cans on the street when you're charging people nine hundred bucks to go to your class and do this. Uh, I have a problem with that. You know, if we can uh, feed, you know, the illegal aliens <laughs> for, for free, why can't we help addicts for free? Well, that's a good subject. I think it's a good subject. I think that part of it is. And, and the rebel part of me is going to come out in that. You know? Yeah. And we, because do we have time to do that now? No. We, <laughs> only, we have like 30 seconds. Huh? <laughs> A little okay. over a minute. Yeah. I think that because needs to be a topic. I, 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 I'm looking at what about. we're doing for a lot of poor people in this country that, you know, and we give them, you know, we give them food, we give them a house, we give them everything, we give them a car, they, they don't have to drive, we give them a license, yeah, go ahead. But if you're a drunk or a drug addict, ooh, but you're assuming this that is going to cost got a you. DUI is an addict. Sometimes no, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't, no, I don't mean if, if right. an addict. I just mean that. You, 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 this economy is bad, and all of a sudden you want Joe Schmo, who's working uh, baking donuts in the morning for three bucks an hour, to come up with a thousand bucks to go to your class. Okay, so I want him to come up with a thousand bucks, and maybe he'll never drink and that drive. Most again. of the time, some. Maybe he'll never drink and drive again. Mm, yeah, maybe he won't. Because there are mm. people who, one time, but that's embarrassment, a, that'd be a good subject. have to pay it in, never drink that'd and drive again. Subject. Yeah, yeah. Which is why on the first one, people typically don't go to treatment. Yeah. Well, I don't know if this show made any sense. <laughs> I don't know. I think it did. You know, because I love this one. We have a good time together. But I think, I think we're going to break up the Deanna and Jerry thing and stick somebody in the middle here. We will. For the next we'll, show. We'll get, a, we'll get somebody. And, uh, uh, that wraps up another recovery today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, we'll put it up on YouTube after it's shown on TV. And, uh, you know, hit the view button and, and tell us. Give us some comments. We need comments. We need comments on the show. Um, I'm going to end it like I always end it. If you're out there and you're having a problem with alcoholism, drug addiction, or any addic addiction, and you're not doing anything about it, you're just spreading the disease. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Yourself straight.